Welcome back to the channel. I am in the White Plains Westchester County International Airport. So far the airport is small and compact. A very small rental car return area. My rental car had some sort of electronic issue and Enterprise gifted me with 20% off my rental costs. So that was pretty nice. I'm up here on the third level actually and they have a little observation deck. Be warned, the observation deck is where delayed families going to Orlando end up. There's a little cafe, some convenience stores, but basically it's pretty, pretty much uh, smaller than my home airport, it turns out. Let's go down and get through security. This airport is a pretty trippy. It's all, the waiting area is all one big room. So there's at least six gates. So people boarding six flights almost simultaneously, all in the same room. Uh, so if you're traveling through West, Westchester, wait until you have to go through security to get in here. You're supposed to be boarding at five and it's 4.30, so 30 minutes of 500 of my closest friends. All right, based on the sheer numbers, use the bathroom before you go through security if you're traveling through Westchester. Just a, just a little tip for you. So the lady sitting next to me said that this is not normal for this airport, which is why she normally flies out of here. And keep your head on a swivel. I just turned around and looked at the big board. I am now in gate C, which is still right over there. So just a couple more minutes. slightly ominous sign. I can see that they're, they've taken some bags off of the aircraft and they brought a luggage cart over. So maybe they are unloading the plane. That's not good. So they just came over and said the crew timed out. So we have to wait for a new crew as well. So I don't know if the airplane's broken and I don't know how long it's gonna take to get a new crew. Back inside the funhouse that is Westchester County International Airport. Um, Eight o'clock departure rescheduled from yesterday, so good times. Made it to the Marriott last night. Um, got a good four hours of sleep. Um, I just tossed and turned, didn't sleep well. Last I checked, everything is on time for an eight o'clock departure. Uber was super fast. I get to hang out and watch the funhouse unfold. Hopefully I get out of here about an hour from now and I will be on my aircraft. Stay tuned, find out next. Boarding was intended to begin 10 minutes ago. I believe we're gonna be using the same gate as this JetBlue flight that is boarding behind me. So we're likely to have another delay. I don't think we'll be able to board until they are completed. <sighs> Yay, more delays. As of right now, I believe I will be getting home this evening. I just witnessed a passenger on my flight angrily confront the gate agent about where our gate is gonna be. Um, stomped away, blah, 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 blah. Got angry about Nothing that they can do, but got to wait for JetBlue to get out of the gate. It's really an airport problem, not a breeze problem at this point for that particular issue. The fact that we got canceled yesterday, that's a breeze problem. It's 8.05. We are now officially five minutes late. They just announced that the uh, they're still waiting on the gate. So again, I'm still waiting for all these JetBlue flights to push. Ah. 
and one minute later our flight is up on the board. We have gate A and we're leaving at 8.35, they claim. I wouldn't put money on it at this point. The Breeze people have made very infrequent announcements, at least in my opinion. Um, I think they should be spamming the airwaves with their announcements, but uh, they're not doing that. So like every 30 minutes we've gotten an, an announcement. I could have slept in. It's been such a weird trip. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but uh, I was given breeze points because of the delay leaving Los Angeles to get here. I used my breeze points to upgrade back up to the nicest or first class section. After all these delays, I'm expecting another pile of breeze points. Um, I... Wow, I don't know if I ever use those. Um, overall, just just incredibly disappointing about the lack of communication from Breeze. I understand the airport is out of their control, but uh, man, this is kind of ridiculous, the lack of communication that they've got. Really disappointed, and I can't imagine that if they don't improve things that they're gonna be in business that much longer, so. We should be boarding here after another JetBlue flight. And of course, they have to have two planes boarding at the same time through basically the same doors. Yeah. Well, I'm actually getting on the airplane. So that's exciting. outside for 30 minutes that itself affected our flight duty hours which is something we cannot extend uh, hence we had to spend the night uh, so my apologies anyway you're here on board so uh, just relax enjoy it and uh, try to forget about last night hopefully uh, your time in Los Angeles will be much better once again my apologies and uh, hopefully we could uh, give you a better flight and uh, of course enjoy your time with Los Angeles thank you I, I really dig this entire seating area with the little laptop tray, TV tray, um, there's a leg rest, seat reclines, it's very comfortable. Um, it's just really let down by the rest of the breeze infrastructure at this point. I'm into two flights and it's kind of the same problem for both times, so I don't think their infrastructure is quite mature. It's, we'll go with that. That time again, time for the snack du jour. Uh, what is the snack du jour? It's the snack of the day. Mm, that sounds good. I'll have that. For today's snack du jour, I have uh, Mexican chocolate cookies. I've never had them before, so this is kind of a, what the point of this little thing is to see if these sorts of snacks are good or bad. So let's try these Mexican chocolate gluten-free cookies. And at first glance, they look kind of dry and crumbly. Um, let's find out if they are dry and crumbly or if they're yummy, yummy, yummy. Chip cookie. 
this would not qualify as a soft cookie. So it's just okay. If you like a crunchy cookie, then I think you probably like these. But just like I said, a little, a little bit of a coffee finish. So not bad. It's just kind of been consistently choppy. Pilot can't seem to find a good altitude to. Smooth. I think we're passing a pretty big storm front. We've just passed the 3 hour 20 minute mark and the great expanse of the Midwest lies below us. We've cleared out of the clouds. I think I mentioned that I didn't really sleep very well last night and my app was good. I'll say it again, I, I think I've, I'm probably being very redundant, but I'm, I'm a big fan of this seat. The leg rest is one of my favorite features. Well, we've got some drama brewing on the flight. There's a passenger sitting further back, I don't know where has her dog on the flight, and earlier she let it loose and it ran up to the front galley. There's a passenger in 1D who is um, apparently afraid of dogs. It's like a, it's like a terrier or something. Um, anyway, apparently she's crying and flight attendants are trying to soothe her nerves. The dogs seem very friendly from what I've been able to tell. And the passenger who owns the dog wants to get into it with the lady who's afraid of the dog. Apparently about the fact that she complained. Oh mama, there's trouble. It's mass hysteria. Hopefully nothing else happens. estimate of six hours and ten minutes. We've got a little more than an hour left. Um, I'm guessing we are somewhere over New Mexico or Arizona. Probably Arizona. Looking like a, some canyon lands looking structures out there. Water service with about an hour to go. And Based on the turbulence, I'm guessing they're going to be cleaning the cabin up a little early because it's still bumpy. I mean, not terrible. I mean, I like it. I haven't had this happen on a flight for years. I don't remember the last time, actually. But the pilot came over the intercom and told everybody over on the right that if they looked out to the right, they could see the Grand Canyon. Um, I don't remember last time they had a flight where the pilot pointed out a landmark. So a lot of people gawking out their windows over there. your seriously nice flight was a breeze. The flight attendant ended the flight with that. It's it's such an interesting experience flying these two flights of breeze. If I had to use a, a football analogy, their ground game is awful and their air game is amazing. The in-flight experience is um, really good. <laughs> you know that uh, nicest seat is really, really good. Um, I think that's my favorite uh, domestic first class seat by far. Where they fall down is everything on the ground. So I made it back to LA and uh, you know it's beautiful, lovely, wish you were here. The real question that comes to mind is would I fly Breeze again? I'm expecting that they're gonna give me some vouchers based on my three-hour delay. I got a $75 voucher. So based on an overnight delay 
Uh, will there be a voucher or they will they just reimburse my expenses? I don't really know yet. Um, we'll stay tuned on that. So this video won't really end until all of that gets resolved. So the resolution is coming up next. So once the flight was finally canceled, I called an Uber, got a hotel room in White Plains and off I went. While I was on my way to the uh, hotel, I received this email from Breeze stating uh, that they had to move my flight till tomorrow. We know additional expenses occur when plans change last minute. I'm sorry, I didn't change my plans, you did. And we'd like to help offset the cost. So right from the get go, they're telling me that they're probably not gonna pay all my expenses that they caused. Each reimbursement request will be reviewed. Please allow up to 30 days for a reply from our team. Hotel reimbursement is available for up to $125 based on double occupancy per room. Please review our hotel reimbursement guidelines and instructions for submitting your receipts by completing the hotel reimbursement request form within the next six days, which I did. Uh, after I got home, I submitted my receipts. Uh, the hotel room was roughly $200. The round trip on Uber was roughly $80. And uh, because of my Marriott status, I got food at the uh, executive lounge at the Marriott in White Plains. So I didn't have any food expenses. One thing that is not stated on that email is anything about transportation or food. In my more than 400 flights, I've had four overnight delays. The first of those delays occurred in San Francisco and I was too stupid, too inexperienced to know that I should have gone to the airline to get some compensation, a hotel room, some food, something like that. Uh, the second time Delta delayed me overnight in Salt Lake City and they put me in a hotel. The hotel provided some breakfast the next morning. It was pretty late. Uh, so there was no food vouchers provided then. Uh, the next time American Airlines did it to me in Dallas and they gave me a hotel room and food vouchers, which is very, you know, I think the minimum you should do. And then this time here's Breeze and we're gonna give you $125 for a hotel room. That's it. At least that's what this email implies. Um, you could possibly read it that they're going to reimburse your other expenses. This is actually what we were told by the ground staff in White Plains that save your receipts, submit them to Breeze, and you'll be reimbursed. So at the time, I was like, okay, fine. Full disclosure, they also provided, if you read the next paragraph, a $150 uh, value, uh, 15,000 Breeze points, redeemable up to 24 months. 125 for a hotel room and $150 on Breeze. Okay, uh, so I submit my hotel reimbursement form, which does have place for food, lodging, and transportation costs. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't make a copy of that. And here is what I got back from Breeze. The first email from Breeze says, thank you for submitting your hotel receipt for reimbursement. We apologize again for this disruption of your Breeze Airways flight on March 4th. The receipt you submitted is more than an offer to help offset the unexpected, unexpected expense. So we've approved the maximum amount of 125. I'm sorry. Um, the ground staff told me that I should submit all my receipts and they would be reimbursed. Apparently that uh, memo didn't get to the ground staff. And so I can get $125 back, plus the $150 Breeze voucher, effectively. So I responded with, there's no mention of my Uber expense. There is no lodging at White Plains, so transportation was necessary. Will that be included in the reparations? Thank you. Um, I believe Breeze is using a bot to respond to customer complaints. These responses all have the same kind of tone that I interpret as kind of superior and snarky. That's just me. The response is, thank you for reaching out. All this, although this flight did not qualify for transportation compensation, we appreciate your sharing your experience. We have sent the payout email for the hotel. I'm, I'm sorry, what? It didn't qualify for transportation. There's no lodging at White Plains Airport. Um, yeah, so I responded to that. What criteria would qualify? Your answer indicates to me that I should have walked to a hotel or slept in the airport. The closest hotel I found on Google search was 7.1 miles away. How does this not qualify? 
I think that's a very valid, logical question. Um, at this point, I'm not really getting too hot and irritated yet, um, but they're working on it. Their response, we understand the confusion and appreciate the feedback so that we can improve our communications with guests moving forward. Have a nice day. You're kidding, right? This, this, is, this is a joke. I'm, I'm being punked now, I'm starting to think. To which I responded, you are amazing and not in a good way. Cancel a flight and you expect the passengers to foot the bill. I'm pretty sure your crew didn't have to pay their own ex- overnight expenses. Thanks for illustrating to everyone what kind of airline you are. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm definitely hot. Um, this this absence of customer service uh, is a good way to go out of business, in my opinion. Uh, as I get older, I focus more on the customer experience that I get from various businesses. And if I get good customer service, I'm more likely to go back there. Their response was, transportation to your hotel would be counted toward your hotel cost for the night. The combination of your expenses exceeded our offer of 125 per two guests on the flight reservation. We approve the maximum amount according to our original offer. We understand this is not the outcome you'd hope for, but we hope you'll have a nice night. Really? Uh, there's, there is zero mention in any of the documentation that it would not be covered. Again, the ground staff said, save your receipts and Breeze will reimburse you. My final salvo to Breeze. You are amazing. Customer service like this is the death note for most companies. Good luck with your business. I'm done with Breeze and as a soon to be travel agent, I'll be advising my clients away from Breeze. Thank you for your time. Please do not respond unless you have actual compensation changes to make. And as of today, April 11th, they have not responded. So I am unlikely to get any more money out of Breeze. Uh, I did get my $125. uh, So I am out of pocket uh, my Uber expenses of $80 and $80 from my hotel because uh, they wouldn't cover that. So I'm at $160. I will not be flying Breeze ever again. This level of customer service, in my opinion, is not acceptable. Um, And I'll be voting with my feet and going somewhere else. Let me know what you think in the comments. I plan to do more discussions related to Breeze on my live stream this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. If you want to join the conversation, please come in. If you are subscribed to my channel, you automatically get that notification. If you are not a subscriber, this is a great time. And if you feel bad for me and my experience with Breeze, please give this video a like. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching today and happy travels with anyone other than Breeze. See ya.